some of you guys don't know, I, I'm a true believer in, and I said this, building relationships and networking. Um, the reason James is here is he's actually, I've had the honor to be on their podcast, and he's got a partner, George, who's awesome. But I met George through his brother, Tom, who was doing my Facebook marketing way back when it was really easy to do. You just throw up some <laughs> huge opportunity and shitload of applications came your way. Um, so I think that was really cool. And then we started to talk and, and communicate via online. And next thing you know, he decides he's going to fly over here and hang out with us for a couple days and share some knowledge on building a remote business. There. And this is something that a lot of people aren't thinking about. They're thinking, I need to be here or I can't build it here. They put limitations on themselves. So let's give a round of applause for James Modi. <laughs> so I'm going to do a quick intro before I get into my main thing. So Remote Fit Pro is my com company and in keeping with the theme, it's all about a movement. So we've created something we call the Remote Revolution, as you can see here. And this is what I believe is a huge opportunity for all you guys where you can build a business, take it online, travel the world and live with freedom if you so wish to do so. And that's what we stand for, that's what we believe in. We use different methods and, and techniques to do so. But I want to get real basic with you guys today. But before I do, I want to share this day with you, which was Wednesday the 16th of September 2015. So three years ago. It was 7.02 a.m. in the morning. I'm in my car driving to work in North London. I'm driving up Clarendon Road to the big Fortune 500 office that I used to work in. As I drive up the road, I'm feeling tired, I'm feeling drained, I'm feeling really down. But I pull into my parking space, I get out of the car, I pop the boot lid, and I'm like, where the fuck's my gym kit? Remembered, left it at home today. So I shut the boot, get my stuff, like the rest of my stuff, and I start walking to my office. I cross the road, I get to the elevator, I press the button, it comes down, opens up, step in, fourth floor, doors close, and then I catch a glimpse of my reflection in that mirror. I look at myself and go, I look like shit today. It bings, I get out, get my swipe card, go in on the fourth floor and I walk down all those rows of desks. Anyone who's been in offices, you'll know what this is like. It's like row after row after row after row. And my desk is this last one. It's the final one in the corner. No one's there because it's like 7.10 in the morning right now. So I'm sitting there, I put my headphones in as I do every morning and I begin to work. Looking at a spreadsheet like you do, so I'm just working away. About an hour goes by and then I feel a tap on my shoulder. It's my manager. I look at him and go, you're right, bitch. And he goes, Shit, dude, you look awful. I'm like, yeah, I feel it. He goes, I'll tell you what, I'll go get the coffees and see how you get on. So off he trots, he gets the coffees. I put my headphones back in. I turn to my laptop just like this, and the fucking screen starts to melt, literally. Like, the lines, the words, the, the cells on the spreadsheet are all just falling off the page in front of me. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? So what had happened is, I'd been living a lifestyle that a lot of young millennials do when they come from university and they get into that corporate world, is you go out and you get fucked up. You drink a lot, you take a lot of drugs, and I'd just come back from a five-day bender where I'd spent a good part, probably five to six hundred pounds on just everything that I could get my hands on. So at this point, I'm on this savage come down, I'm at work, my manager comes back in, he looks at me with the coffees and goes, dude, you need to go home. I'm like, yeah, I feel it. So I get my stuff, it's now about, what, 8 a.m.? get my stuff, walk back up that long, long walk that I spoke about earlier via everyone who's coming into work. They're looking at me like, what the fuck is wrong with James? I sit down, sorry, I get the lift, get in it, cross the road, get in my car, and I just begin to cry. I'm just sitting there, and I remember like my hands, hands on the steering wheel, head on the dashboard, I'm just fucking crying. And in that moment, I was like, what am I doing with my life? Why am I doing this? Who am I doing it for? What is this all about? So I'm in this big emotional state, and I'm like, well, I've got to get home and it's about an hour drive, so what's the traffic going to be like? So I pull out my phone and like we always do when we pull out our phone, we go on Facebook, right? So I go on Facebook and I see this ad pop up and this ad says, change, turn your business and life around in a weekend. And I'm like, that's fucking corny, but I'm in a place right now, I'm in a vulnerable place, the place that Elijah just spoke about. I was in that 2% and I was like, I need this. And I was already a personal trainer at the time. I was building an online nutrition company. I had about four or five clients paying me between 20 and 50 bucks a month. So nothing, not something that you could build a sustainable business on. But I saw this and I was like, do you know what, I need to go to this event. I need to go. So I booked my ticket. I booked my ticket this, oh no, the click's broken. Put it back on. So anyway, I booked my ticket. I think the thing's frozen. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Okay, so I buy my ticket, I go to this event, and my mind is blown. Like I'm in a room with fit pros like this today, and I'm just like, this is absolutely incredible what's happening. 
How are these people scaling their businesses? How are they creating this lifestyle? How are they doing these things? And it gets me really excited to do the same thing. So I'm in this position and it gets to the end of this presentation and I'm like, I don't want to take my business online. Uh, sorry, I don't want to have a facility, but I want to take my business online. I'm like to the guy, how much is it? And he's like, $8,000. Now, I've never heard at this point in my life of someone spending $8,000 on one thing. So I'm like, that is absolutely insane. I can't afford that. And he's like, well, how much can you afford? Well, I just spanked all my money on drugs like I do every weekend, but I've got 500 bucks. And he's like, okay, you put that down and you've got 30 days to get the remaining 7,500 to me. I'm like, cool, no worries. So I get in my car, I drive home, but on the way I'm like, man, I want to start this life fresh. So I stop off at my girlfriend's house. I break up with my girlfriend, about a three-hour conversation. <laughs> I should have asked her for some money on the, on the way. So I break up with my girlfriend, get back in the car, I'm like feeling like, okay, that's the first thing I need to do. Walk into my parents' house, because that's where I'm staying at the time, go into my dad's office, and straight away I was like, dad, I need seven and a half thousand dollars. And he just looks at me and he's like, what the fuck do you need seven and a half thousand dollars for? I'm like, Look, I want to take this business online, I want to do this, I want to do this. And for some reason, my dad goes, here's my credit card, but you've got seven days to get this money off. Seven days. I'm like, no worries. Because I'm just in this mindset where I'm like, I will do fucking anything to get out of this shit position I'm in where I'm just wasting my life. So I'm like, I'll make this shit happen. So I get my dad's credit card, I walk upstairs to my bedroom, I shut the door, I open up my laptop, and I start applying for credit cards where I can transfer money from my dad's to mine. So I could get a transfer card, but I couldn't get a paid in full card. So I finally find this card, I ring up the assistant of this mentor, pay the seven and a half thousand, then ring up the credit card company, I'm like, cool, can I transfer it from this to this? They're like, yeah, no worries at all. Transfer the money across. They're like, it's gonna take a couple of days to clear. I'm like, no worries at all. And then I sit in my laptop and I'm like, oh, what's the next step? So I've ditched my girlfriend, I'm invested in this new business, I think I should quit my job. So I get my laptop out and I start punching in this like, letter of resignation and I build this letter out and then I go back downstairs give my dad his credit card back and go, dad, the money will be off in three days time. Oh, and by the way, I'm quitting my job on Monday. And he just looks at me and fucking hits the roof. Because you've got to think, like, I'm from this family where it's like, do well at school, go to university, get a corporate job. That's what we do. So as soon as I've broken that pattern for him, he's like, you've just wasted 24 years of your life. What the fuck do you think you're doing? And I was like, no, so I'm doing this. So I'm in this position now where it's sink or swim. And I think this is what Raz has been talking about is like, for you guys in this room to be here, I believe that all of you will swim. When you have that opportunity, when you burn all your bridges, you will swim. So I was in this position where I'm like, okay, I'm gonna swim. So I did, month one went by, this is a brand new business, did 3,000 in sales, month two, 5,000, month three, we did 8,000, which meant in 90 days, I did 16,000 pounds. From literally where I was doing 50 pound sessions, sorry, 50 pound a month uh, before that, because I had a system, a strategy, but ultimately I had a belief system that I could make it work, and I told myself the right stories. So much so, I created this whiteboard that still hangs in my parents' house today, really weirdly. And I put like sales goal, I want to hit 100K, financial goals, I want like an Amiga Seamaster, proper watch geek. Um, got money saved, I put this big housing deposit goal. I was writing all this stuff, these motivational quotes. We've got like Tony Robbins here, we've got all this cool stuff. This is really basic from years ago now. And that was something that drove me. I was like, okay, cool, I can start to do this, I can get more freedom. I was like, right, so I've got this money. What do people do when they get money? Well, I want significance, so what do I do? I go and buy an Audi TT. Worst decision of my life, hands down. <laughs> like, this is really stupid. That, it did sit on my driveway, because I don't live in the UK anymore, and I was paying Audi 524 pounds a month, and just sat on my driveway. Fucking stupid. But anyway, so I get this car, <laughs> and I start buying all this stuff. I start accruing all these things, and I'm like, oh, but this is weird. Why am I not happy? I was getting all this money. I had this new business, but I wasn't happy. I felt really down, so I was like, what am I going to do? And I saw this minimalism thing. I think it was on Netflix or something. You guys might know the minimalists. So I'm like, ah, shit, that's what I need to do. So I sell all my stuff. Like, I'm a pretty extreme guy. I just like go from one big thing to the next, right? So I sell all my stuff. I'm like, fuck this. I'll get rid of all my stuff. So this is what I have today. And like, I don't know, is my, my backpack, where's my backpack? This is my backpack. So all of that stuff fits into this bag. And this is literally what I carry around. This is like my biggest prized possession other than my passport is this bag, right? So that's all my, my belongings pretty much to this day. So I sold my stuff and I decided to start traveling the world. So over the next sort of 12 months, I went to all these amazing countries, went to all the best CrossFit gyms in Thailand, in Dubai. I flew my mum out to meet me on an island in Thailand. I had all these amazing opportunities with my sister, flew her out, my new business partner, all of these things. And it was just this crazy journey over the next 12 months. But the truth was, I still wasn't happy. I still wasn't happy. And it took me a real long time to look at myself and go, this business that I've built, is the problem right now, because I've attached all my worth, and I spoke to AJ about this on a podcast, I attached all my worth to my business. 
So outside of my business, I didn't have anything, but I built my business from a place of lack. It was a place of, fuck you world, I'm gonna prove you wrong, I wanna get out of my job. So I ended up in this situation where I wasn't passionate about helping 50 year old women lose weight. Like, why on earth was a 26 year old dude doing that? Like, I just had no connection with it. So I was in this position and I was like, well, I need to make a change. What am I passionate about? I was passionate about business, I was passionate about adventure, I was passionate about freedom. So at this time, I was like, I need to let go of this. I've got to let go of this business and build something new. I've got to create something that I really stand for and what I believe in. And that's when I saw my friend pop up on Facebook, a guy called George Crawshaw. He was in the same boat. He was in the same boat where he wanted to create something new. He wanted something, something that he believed in. So I ring this guy up and I'm like, George, why don't we go and meet in Penang in Malaysia on this island and let's sit and just map out a business for the next couple of days and see what happened. And this is us sitting in Starbucks um, in Penang all these bits of paper on the table, and I didn't know, but that paper would turn into the company today that's brought me here, Remote Fit Pro. Now, that's what I want to talk to you about. It's the world's longest introduction in the world. Um, <laughs> but now I want to get that. I don't know, how long was that? Was that like 10 minutes, probably? Here we go, here we go. All right, so here we go. So we're in this situation now where we want this new business, but how do we stand out in a saturated market that's skeptical as fuck? Now, some of you guys might think the same in the fitness industry, right? It's saturated and a lot of people are skeptical because they've been mugged off, they haven't got the results they were promised and people are just you know, not very happy with the industry. And we were the same as fitness coaches or whatever you want to call it. But it all came down to positioning. I think you guys can all agree, if you can position yourself as an authority, you're going to be in an incredible position. Sorry to keep using that word, but that's what's going to happen. And of course, because of that, we wanted to create a tribe, we wanted to create a movement, we wanted to create something bigger than ourselves. And that's what we came to. And that is what Remote Fit Pro is. And this is what I'm going to talk to you about is how we rapidly got, well, how I got to this point today, what the, what the strategies were and what our students are doing too, with something that I just called literally last night, the instant impact method, because that's what it is. I want to show you guys how you can create an impact very, very quickly in your business. And I'm going to be showing you that with this very long title, which you'll probably see on something like Russell Brunson, the, the three-part system for building a wildly profitable online fitness business that positions you in authority in six months or less, even if nobody's heard of you. And this is legit. This is what I've done with our company. It's what our students are doing right now. I'm going to show you live examples. This isn't stuff that was working last year. This works. You don't need money. You don't need to have an authority status. You just need to have a resourcefulness mindset. You need to be using your resources other than money, which is time and energy, as we spoke about. So this is going to work for you if you're one of three things. You're brand new to the industry, and you want to get it right from the start. Secondly, I know some of you guys are brand new. You're like starting out. If you want to switch niche or move online. So if you're thinking about this, this is going to work for you as well. And finally, if you're looking to scale and you need a predictable and consistent way of generating leads and closing sales, the final part of this formula is for you for that. The, two the, the former two parts, I still recommend, but maybe not as much. So part one, influence the network building. I think we can all agree that if you're an influencer, shit happens, it's good. When you get a, when you get a big following of people who actually trust you, not just because you post in topless selfies all the time, but they, you actually have influence, not you're an influencer, you have influence, so you can persuade people. That's a powerful place to be. So we're new in this market. We're skeptic, everyone's a skeptic with us, and they're like, how are we going to get that influencer status? How are we going to get there quickly? Because if we can achieve that, we can raise our prices. Opportunities will come to us, just like you guys in the fitness market. So what is the fastest way to associate yourself and connect with influencers? We had to sit down and we had to think and was like, we need to get selfies with people like Raz. We need to get selfies with people like AJ. How are we going to do that? Well, we came up with the idea of podcasting. Not obviously us, but that's what we were thinking about. And we were like, let's do podcasting. The reason being is everyone likes to talk about themselves. Like they do. They, they say they don't, but they do. They like to talk about themselves. It's free. It's a platform. If you pitch it right, which I'm going to show you in a second, you can build your network very, very quickly. So here's what we did. We created a hit list. The first thing you guys want to do, and I strongly suggest whatever niche or industry you're in, get into a podcast or some kind of platform. It could be a blog where you have guest writers or guest contributors. It's so important because you can use their influence to grow yours. So we created a hit list, 100 people. Tony Robbins, number one. Like that's, sorry, number 100. How do we get to Tony? Well, we need to get AJ on first, all right? So that's what we were thinking about. No, AJ, you were like 10, all right? So. <laughs> <laughs> So, but that's what we're thinking. We're like, okay, so who do we know right now who we can get on this hit list? And we built out this list of all these people to get to the top. That's what we wanted to do. Then we said, okay, we've got this list. Let's work with the first 10 people. Let's start engaging with them on social media. So some people we knew, so we could just go and approach them straight away. But the people we didn't, we start engaging with. So we went on, the, on their Instagrams. So we started liking, we started commenting, we started sending them DMs. We started just to build a relationship. Nothing like pushy, but just to show we're in their space. So we cared. Then we sent them an email invite. Like as much as social is great, 
These big people check their email inboxes. That's what we've found anyway, but of course, try different things. <coughs> but we send them an email invite and be like, hey guys, uh, would you like to hop on our show where we're going to be spreading the remote revolution, this whole, this whole philosophy of taking a business online, traveling the world and living with freedom. So we had a shared mission. That's really important. We had a shared mission. So that's what we did. So literally in the next couple of months, AJ Mirzard, I guess some of you guys know who that is, came on our show. Obviously everyone knows who this guy is. Joe Pasia, copywriter, everyone knows who he is. This, I don't think anyone other than Perry will know. Does anyone know who this is? There's a guy called Ben Coomba. He's like my man crush when I was starting out my business. And he's the UK's probably leading influencer in health and fitness. And he has a podcast called Ben Coomba Radio. And it's like one of the top three or four in the world for health and fitness. Huge podcast. So we want, let's get him on the show. Mitch Miller. Anyone know Mitch Miller? A badass copywriter. Got him on the show. And anyone know this guy? Yes. Ulysses, this guy's going to be huge in a couple of years, if not already. He's a 21-year-old PR geek, and this guy blew my mind what he's doing. So keep an eye out for this guy. But we've got these people on our show, and the show's called The Remote Revolution Show. But I don't want to talk about us. If you guys want to check that out, please do. It's obviously free. It's got loads of cool stuff on it. But I want to talk about what our students are doing now. So you guys might be thinking, great, you approach these guys, you've got them on, you're an anomaly. But it's not true. One of our students, Simon Mitchell, this was posted like last week. Everyone know who this is? Anyone? Crossfitter? Jason Kalipa? Cross, yeah, massive crossfitter. He got him on his show. This is a guy with no real following. He's got 800 followers on Instagram, our, stu our, our student. And he gets Jason Kalipa, who's a freaking CrossFit Games champion, on his show. So it's possible. How did he do it? Well, in this instance, we got him to go to Body Power, which is a big expo in the UK, approach Jason Kalipa face to face, and he had the audacity to go, will you come on my show? And that's what you've got to do. Have you got the audacity to sink or swim? That's what it is, right? And then because of that, if you type in his podcast now into Spotify, it's this morning, type in Muscle, he's now number four for this podcast because it's had shares, because of Jason Khalifa, because of everyone else. And he's now ahead of Mike Matthews when you type in the word muscle. That's mad, right? Everyone knows who Mike Matthews is because of this strategy. So you can do the same thing. People share, your network grows. So that's the first thing. So now I've got myself some authority status. I'm seen on the same playing field as these people. The second thing I need to do is audience hijacking. Now, this is my favorite thing to probably talk about, or my second favorite thing. And this is the concept where, why spend all your time building your audience from scratch, spending money on ads, spending your time? Why don't you just go to a pre-built audience and steal them from that authority in an ethical way? That's what we did. So as I said, building an authority from time uh, takes a very long time from scratch. What you're better to do is just ethically hijack it. And this is what we do. So the first thing you want to do is ask yourself, where do your audience hang out? We spoke about that already, but which influencers, which people of significance do they currently follow? What platforms are those people on? What groups are they in? And get into their space. And if you've done the first part of this correctly, where you've done the podcast in, you already are probably added to their private group. So you're now in that person's space. So they don't mind if you go in there and start adding value because they're, they're mates with you because you've done the first thing. Then you want to connect with the admin if you haven't already, because sometimes the admin's different from the influencer and you want to ask if you can start posting and adding value to that person's space. And the final thing is, you want to give away an exclusive offer for the people, um, for, the, for the followers of that in influencer. And we use something called the free challenge funnel, which I'm going to talk about next in more detail. So I know you guys run challenges, they might be paid. We run free challenge funnels, and I'm going to talk about how that works. So here's a quick example. This is from UK PTs. Again, I'm British, but there's, there's 10,000 PTs in this group. This is one I did. I sent a message to the admin saying, hey man, I've got this new uh, free five-day course, can I post it in the group? And he goes, yeah, sure, sounds good to me, mate. So I post it in the group. Really shitty old like copy, Elijah, this is the stuff that people should not be posting on paid ads anymore. But this is what we posted. Because it was free, it was a ridiculous offer. When the offer is good enough, normally the copy doesn't matter. So the offer was so freaking crazy, uh, we actually do sell this course for 997 now, like it was legit selling it for 997. Um, but we gave away 20 spaces on this new course to show you how to build a free challenge funnel, which I'm going to talk about next. All right, so we had 20 people jump on straight away. Second example, Ben Coomba, the podcast crush guy I spoke about earlier, became friends with him, got into his community, allowed me to post a picture up um, and some copy asking if people wanted to come into our challenge, and I've got 171 people. He runs a nutrition um, certification, so these are our perfect clients, 171 people. But again, this isn't just me who's doing it. This is one of our students, Sean. He said he wanted to try this audience hijacking thing. He got 30 people interested in four hours and 20 have sent back forms to work with him already because he built that know, like, and trust via an influencer. So it was already pre-built. Another guy's help. This is Matt. Matt's saying he wanted to try out the audience hijacking thing. He's bigging it up. He says here, I've managed to secure so much business for my outdoor fitness sessions 
because of this technique and I'm going to have to put on more sessions a week now and find another location without spending money on ads because he's gone to an influencer, he's found out, built a relationship, he's hijacked their audience, they've come to him. Awesome. Stuff works. Is that all making sense so far, guys? Sweet. Cool. So this is the final section of this talk and I hope I haven't babbled on for too long. But this is where you make your money. So what's happened is I've come into a situation where I've filmed my relationship with my influencers. I've now taken their audience ethically because I've agreed to do it with them. And now I just need to sell them into my program. So this is where a free challenge funnel comes in. So what does a free challenge funnel do? What on earth is a free challenge funnel? Well, ultimately, it gets results in advance. So we run a five-day challenge, which I'll talk about in a second. And you guys, I would strongly encourage you to do it too. I'm going to show you how. Is that you create this system that in five days, you teach them your unique methodology. So Elijah was talking about like the three-step process for the mums or whatever it is. You would teach them that in five days. It has to be short, sharp, and snappy, and you get them the results in advance. What it also does is it positions you as an authority. Of course, you've already done the, the previous two steps, which have helped with that. But if you're the person who gets someone a result for free, they're gonna, they don't care who, who else is in the marketplace anymore. You become the only option for them because they started to get results with you, so they're going to want to keep getting results with you as you go through. So we run something called the Five Day Online Startup Challenge. This is for our business, where we help fitness professionals have no idea uh, business at all. They go from idea to paying clients in five days or less. And we have a whole wall of testimonials of this happening. Okay? But again, this isn't about me. This is about our students. This is one guy, Matt Tustin, brand new to the online space. He came straight into it. He ran his free challenge using the exact techniques I've just been through. He got 47 people to come in because of the strategies. He got 11 calls booked. He made three sales at 447 in a week. So that's like $2,000 in a week with no online business. Same thing with Mari. Mari lives in the Philippines. So his average salary as a Filipino resident is $3,500 a year. A year. Okay? So he comes in. He gets 57 new leads. He gets six people on the phone, four clients, and $2,000 in seven days. From no, he has no business. All right? So this is fresh, fresh stuff, guys, as I was saying at the start. Then Dowie. Dowie did have an existing audience, a smaller audience. Same process. Made £3,000 uh, in sales. Um, and around about 20 calls. And these guys are new to selling. They're not selling super high tickets. So if you guys are advanced, you smash it out of the water. So how do you do this? And this is something that I've never taught for free before. So I'm going to go through and you guys are you know, pretty privileged to get this stuff. So step one is the build process. Challenge infrastructure. So the challenge is going to live or die based on your primary protocol. I'll go into more detail of what this is and how it works. But you need one thing that you get your challenges to do every single day three times a day. So it's typically the diet that they follow. It's basically your diet plan that you give them. It's got to be easy. And you build that into a one-page document on Canva, which I'll show you in a second, which can just be a cheat sheet. You then need daily content. You need to create content that shows them what they need to be doing each day and explaining part of your process because you're trying to indoctrinate people into your way of thinking. So if you have that three-step mum method, on day one, you'll talk about maybe the nutrition side of it, day two, the mindset of whatever it is. So you talk each day about a specific area of your package and your program to indoctrinate them into that. You do that via a Facebook group. This is huge. I know Raz has been talking about this, is community. Facebook groups, in my mind, are the best place to build community, bar none. So if you can create an incredible environment in a Facebook group, and you can do this over five days, which I'm going to show you how, then you're going to be in a great place. Fourth thing we use is daily email reminders. We use bots as well. This is a bit more advanced. You don't have to do this, but definitely have emails, which just keeps sending them back and saying, hey, it's day one, it's day two, it's day three. Pretty self-explanatory. We have a daily web page as well. So this is where we actually store that daily content. So if I make myself a little video, I'm like, hey, welcome to day one of the challenge. We're going to be doing this, this, and this today. Make sure you're focusing on this. Then that goes into a web page, and you can use the ClickFunnels page or whatever you want. And then finally, you need an application page. This is where you make your money. You're giving away so much for free here. It's five days. It's intense. It's live. It's not evergreen. Um, and it's really important that you don't make this evergreen. You can, but everything will dip quickly. Um, because you've got to keep that group engagement high. So what you're going to do is you're going to create an application page for a limited amount of people. And do not fucking lie. Like, I can't state this enough. We do it all the time. We have 10 spots on our sales masterclass when someone joins in. And as soon as they sell out after 24 hours, the price goes up. And all our audience in our five-day challenge sees that the price goes up, so they know we're not fucking around. So if you have limited spots, you want to make it really abundant and say, you've missed out this time, you're too slow. We have no shame in doing that. We do it all the time. We even kick people out our challenge if they don't do the task that day. We're like, sorry, you didn't do it. Kicked out. And we celebrate it in the group. We're like, these people have gone. And we'll tag them. And you can see they've got that like, grayed out tag. 
because they've gone. So it sets a standard. It's like, we're fucking authorities here. If you piss around, then you're not going to be in here anymore. So anyway, this is what the, the funnel map looks like. You guys, I don't know if you want to take a picture. You can speak to me afterwards. I'll send it to you. But basically what happens is you've got a Facebook advert. It doesn't have to be a Facebook, Instagram, whatever it is. It sends them to an opt-in page, thank you page, puts them into an email sequence, and then you've got your day. So this is a kickoff day, then day one, day two, day three, all the way through to day five. How it works is you've got the video. You tell them the daily task you want them to do that day, and then it sends them to an, an offer or a survey form. And offers for a call, obviously, it's an application call. So that's what we run. I'll just let you guys... Yeah, but just, all right. So the success of your challenge rests largely on your primary protocol. It must be simple, actionable, and results driven. So this is how it works. A good protocol is something like precision nutrition with a hand sized portion control guide. A bad protocol is flexible dieting. Do not try and teach someone if it fits your macros in a five day challenge. Because people like AJ said, uh, not AJ, sorry, um, Elijah said, people are not going to give you the time of day. They don't know you, they don't trust you. They're not going to give you time to read this massive document, so don't do that. Um, what we do instead, and this is one of our clients, again, the same guy who's the podcasting, he created the Lean Life Startup. So very, very simple. The guys who are evidence-based practitioners in here, he was like, I can't teach flexible dieting because of the system, but what I can do is say, I want to make sure three meals a day you follow these five things, which is a quarter of your plate of protein, half of veg, the rest is up to you, so you've got a quarter of junk, basically. Take 20 minutes to eat it and a glass of water. That's what he did for his challenge. Really, really simple. He then created a shopping list saying, these are the foods I want you to eat. Can you do that for five days for me? Awesome, great. Step two, I need to induct my challenges. So this is, the success also largely depends on how well you can create a community for your, for your challenges, all right? So what we do here is we research the profiles of the challenges, and this is what people don't do because they can't be asked. If you do this, you're gonna create an incredible emotional connection with your audience. So research, research the Facebook profiles of your challenges. Create a short bio for each person with a picture of them and then post it in the group and then ask them to intro themselves. So what you've done is you've taken the time and you can get a VA to do this if you want, to go into their profile, to find out about them, to put their own picture up and tag them in it and people go, shit, this person cares about me. So if you've done that, imagine what the relationship is that you've built. Very, very powerful. So people skip this and they're like, James, it doesn't work. Well, you haven't shown that you care. You're just after money. So you've got to do this stuff. Step three is preparation. Really quickly now, because I'm short on time, is create the rules and regulations in the pinned post in the group. Kick the challenge off on a Saturday. So the reason I say kick it off on a Saturday and with a kickoff video, uh, basically the kickoff video tells them about the challenge. You have the cheat sheet below it and it gives them time to buy the food for Monday. So then what that means is they're all good to go. Super important, tell them if they don't do their introduction, which is part of the kickoff, their own selfie with the post, you will kick them from the challenge and celebrate that. Celebrate them being kicked from the challenge so other people know that you're serious. All right. Step four is launch. So now it gets to Monday morning. I set my first task live. I then state the daily tasks and what they need to do. And finally, I tag all members in every single post inside that group. So every single day, I put a new Facebook Live in. I explain that you're going to be following the cheat sheet again. And today's task is to take a picture of a vegetable on your head, like just to create engagement. That's all you're trying to do. And then finally, opportunity. This is where you make your money. So super quick, we'll go through this. You provide your challenges with an unannounced bonus of a transformation session, a call to whatever you want to call it, a blueprint call, doesn't matter. Put scarcity on it and stick to it. Like actually say there's this many spots, don't lie. And if you kick people out, people know you're serious already. So that's why it's so important to be that, that authority from day one. And then update with the offer status. So on day three, I can get on a Facebook Live and I said there was eight spots at the start of the week, four already gone, four remaining, and tag the people who've got the four spots. So people know, again, be very transparent and people know you're not messing around here. Because if you've done all the work right, you've got eight highly qualified leads and you're probably gonna close a big percentage of them because you've done all of this for free, which is a huge, huge, huge demand on you. But if you get a team, then you can outsource a lot of this and it works well. So here you go, recap this whole method. Number one, connect with influencers. Number two, ethically hijack their audience. And number three, run a free challenge funnel. And I just wanna wrap up with one final thing here and it's a quick little story. Mitch Miller, for the guys who don't know him, is an absolute copywriting beast, like he's, he's massive. So what happened was, we're in Thailand, and Mitch, is, Mitch has got his big villa on this hill, it's this mansion on top of this hill. And I know he lives there, and I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if we could get a live podcast with him? So I messaged Mitch, and I'm like, can we come over to your house and shoot a podcast with you? And he's like, yeah, no one's ever like, approached me that way before, sure you can, like, it's, it's a cool thing to do, because we had the audacity to do so. So I go over to his house, and the next thing I know is, we're drinking beers on his balcony, and the next thing I know is I'm back in the UK and I get a message pop up on, on Facebook, and it's from Mitch. And he goes, 
hey man, I don't know if you're still in Thailand right now, but I've got my Project Persuasion event, uh, which is going down in two days' time. Do you want to come for free? And it's like five grand a ticket. I'm like, mate, I'm in the fucking UK, but I'll fly out, no worries. And because I've done that and had the audacity to just jump on a flight and fly out, he's like, yeah, man, have a free ticket. Like, let's rock. So I get there. Next thing I know is there's strip, there's fucking ladyboy strippers and all this crazy shit that goes on. <laughs> his, his company's a bit like that, but, but and all this stuff. And then the next thing I know is I'm back in Thailand and I go to their house. So that's Mac, his business partner, and Mitch, this guy up here. I go to their house twice a week to go and jam. We play drums, we play guitar. I literally have one of the world's best copywriters on speed dial. And this happened in a matter of nothing time. Ben Coomber, the next guy that I spoke about, UK's biggest influencer, huge, huge, huge name. Same situation. I finally get him on the podcast after weeks and weeks and weeks of trying, months in fact. Next thing I know is, after the phone goes down, he messages me and goes, hey, I noticed you live in Northampton. I've got an event there next week. Um, do you want to come for free? I'm like, yeah, sure, no worries, Ben. So I come to this event. Ben's there and I pull up in my Audi TT, which I hardly ever drive, right? So I pull off my Audi TT. The event finishes and I'm like, Ben, because I knew he liked Audis. I was like, Ben, what do you reckon of that car? And he's like, that's really nice. I'm like, how about you have that for an hour of mentoring a week? So you have my car, you give me an hour of your time a week. And he goes, I'll think about it. Gets, you know, he goes off, sends me a message the next day and goes, I'm in. What are the, what are the terms and conditions? And I'm like, well, this is what's going to happen. Da, 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 da. So I give him the car. And next thing I know is I'm out raving with him at a drum and bass rave, <laughs> like getting absolutely hammered. He's got my car. I'm posting in his Facebook group. And I've got this audience that's constantly coming to me. Next thing is, literally a couple of days ago, I get a voice note from him and he goes, this is all in the space of three months. Hey man, I know this is a bit forward and I've only just got in a relationship with you, <laughs> but would you like to come to my stag doing my wedding? That happened. So I'm now with the UK's biggest influencer because I did the podcast, because I did all the strategies I've just shown you. And now we're actually working internally with him on his business, doing his marketing, doing his free challenge funnels and all that stuff. And you can do the same in the fitness industry is what I'm saying. It's that same thing. Finally, final, final, final thing. Ross Slaughter, how did I get to this stage today? Exactly the process that I just taught you through here. So we got Raz identified to come on our podcast. We then went in, we delivered a huge amount of value. Uh, Raz has probably seen some of the testimonials and stuff I have on my Facebook. He probably then thought, man, James is cool, he's legit, he's doing the right thing. I'm going to invite him to this event where I stand on the stage today and I give this presentation. So it just shows you how quickly you can do something if you go that extra mile, you have the audacity to do so and you choose to swim every single time. So that's it from me, guys. Thank you very, very much. Really appreciate it. Thank you.